So have you ever experienced a red, painful eye that became extremely sensitive to bright light? Well, then you might have had an anterior uveitis, or sometimes called an iritis. Well, that's today, so let's take a look. Hey guys, welcome to Dr. Eye Health, the place where you come for the best tips and education all about the eyes and vision. And this is the first time we're meeting. I'm Dr. Joseph Allen, and it's my passion to help educate people all about vision, eye diseases, and finding the best vision products so that you can keep seeing your best. If this is the first time you're here, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. And hey, at any point throughout the video, make sure to check out the show notes and links below for further information about anything that we mentioned today. So Shake Andriano Hansen asks if you could make a video about uveitis. Preferably anterior, yes. So uveitis is actually not one single disease. It's kind of like the joint inflammation of arthritis. It can be part of many different disease processes. But in short, a uveitis is a severe form of inflammation that affects the inside of the eye. It can come on really fast or gradual. It can affect one eye or both eyes. Now, if you ever experience a uveitis, uh, or more specifically in this case, an anterior uveitis, sometimes called an iritis, you're gonna have a red, painful eye, could be tearing, you can have decreased vision from it, but you also may have a very high sensitivity to bright lights, or what we'd call photophobia. Now, a lot of times because of that, those same feelings, they're very similar to the description of a pink eye or a conjunctivitis. So a lot of patients who come in to see us thinking that they maybe just need an antibiotic for pink eye or something, nope, they often have uveitis. Now, uveitis is again that severe form of inflammation, and it can affect just about any part of the eye, but most commonly it affects the anterior portion of the eye, which we call an anterior uveitis. Now, to better understand what's going on, let's look at some ocular anatomy. And since most of us learn better visually, let's look at my model eye. Now, a uveitis is inflammation of the uvea, a structure that has three different segments within the eye. You have the iris, the colored part of the eye, the ciliary body, which is the muscle in, within the eye. Then you have the choroid, which is a pigmented interwoven layer of blood vessels that lies behind the retina in the back of the eye. Now, when we say anterior uveitis, we're meaning those anterior structures within the uvea, which is the iris, the muscle that controls the pupil size, and then you have the ciliary body, which helps control the ability to focus up close or accommodate. Then the ciliary body also has an important role of making the aqueous humor. It's kind of like the clear blood of the eye that's in the front portion of the eye. But when you have an episode of an iritis, that ciliary body becomes inflamed and starts to leak small white blood cells as well as proteins into the anterior chamber. And during an examination, your doctor will actually look for these white blood cells floating within the aqueous humor. It kind of looks pretty. It's kind of like watching a snow globe that recently just got shook up. In fact, it actually has a spinning motion because of a convention cycle that happens because the aqueous humor is warmer in the back part of the eye, and then it gets cooler as it approaches the front portion of the eye. Now alongside these inflammatory cells within the aqueous humor, there's actually these other white blood cells that display on the back surface of the cornea and we call those choretic precipitates. Now choretic precipitates can show up as these small fine little white blood cells or they can show up as these large or what we call mutton fat precipitates. And these different presentations could be either described as granulomatous or non-granulomatous. And we do that because it helps us distinguish what the cause of the inflammation might actually be from. Now, during an examination and assuming your doctor recognizes these different signs, they're then gonna go and check your eye pressure as well as dilate the pupil of your eye because that's gonna help the doctor view better inside the eye and make sure that the inflammation isn't affecting anything else such as the vitreous, the retina, or the optic nerve. Now, there are a few things I think you should know, more specifically, what causes an iritis. Now, there's many different reasons for inflammation inside the eye. Some of them could be from infectious reasons, such as a herpes virus, to autoimmune conditions, and sometimes it's even deemed idiopathic, meaning we unfortunately don't know what causes it. No matter how many tests we run, we never really find an answer. But a lot of times for iritis, they are associated with other systemic diseases. And a lot of them, you would have no idea they're related to the eye. 
Most notably is the presence of a genetically inherited protein marker called HLA-B27, or human leukocyte antigen B27. And this antigen is associated pretty strongly with different systemic diseases, but it can be easily detected with a blood test. Now, the most common one is called ankylosing spondylitis, and that's a back condition where your spine starts to fuse together. And that's why I ask all of my patients with an iritis if they personally or in their family have any history of back pain. On top of that question, I'll also ask if they have any other joint pain, specifically if it's involving the knees, if they have problems urinating, if they have any new rashes that have developed, and if they have any history of inflammatory bowel conditions, uh, you know, GI, chronic diarrhea. And again, we ask those questions to figure out if there's any systemic conditions that could be associated with this iritis. Uh, again, this HLA-B27, beyond just ankylosing spondylitis, uh, they may have a condition of what's called Rider syndrome or reactive arthritis. They could have what's called cirrhotic arthritis, or they could have, again, inflammatory bowel disease. Now again, this list is not entirely conclusive. Uh, there are many different causes for an iritis and for uveitis, and that's why these sort of cases should be managed with an eye care professional. I actually find a lot of the times if I have a patient with a severe form of iritis or a recurrent form, then I'm almost always sending off for some sort of lab work just to either confirm or rule out other systemic associated diseases. Now treatments for an iritis must be tailored for for each individual patient. And that's something I learned through my residency. One of the most valuable lessons I learned was that medicine isn't like just memorizing recipes from a cookbook. Their treatment has to be tailored for each individual person because everybody's a little bit different. Everybody responds to treatment a little bit differently and some forms of disease may just not respond the way you suspect it would. Now, because iritis is an inflammatory condition, most people respond very well to the use of a topical steroid eye drop. And we prescribe these drops pretty frequently. We're talking like one drop every one to two hours to start off. Now, the use of those medications and the prescribing of those medications is gonna vary based on both the severity of the inflammatory reaction that's developing, as well as the comfort of the eye doctor prescribing those medications. Now, most of the time in eye care, uh, generic medications, eye drops, work just as effective as brand name, except this is one of those cases where it's not true. Uh, it's believed that brand name Predforte and the other drop I like, Durazol, work better than the generic forms, and there's no financial interest in those medications. It's just well documented uh, across the board that these medications generally get a better response in terms of treatment. There's also the use of cycloplegic drops. Those are the drops that we use to dilate your pupil. Uh, we'll often prescribe those medications alongside the steroid drop because it stabilizes the iris, it prevents that deep pain, throbbing pain that you experience with an iritis, as well as there's a belief that it actually helps close up the tiny gap junctions within the ciliary body that is, causes the inflammatory cells and protein to leak into the anterior chamber. So overall, the combo of using those meds over time heals the iritis up pretty well. Now, most cases of an iritis are well managed with these treatments by a primary eye care provider, whether that be an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. However, there are some extreme cases where the person who's having this issue will need treatment either with an injected steroid inside the eye or there are cases where biologics have been used. But again, those are in very severe or extreme cases. I personally also like to refer and co-manage my patients uh, with a rheumatologist if they have some sort of systemic associated disease because I know that's gonna give them the best care they can possibly get. Iritis is honestly one of my favorite conditions to talk about. Uh, it is a very involved diagnosis, and oftentimes my patients and I become good friends because they come in several times during the treatment period, or they come back during flare-ups. So hopefully you found this video educational, that you got something from it. I hope that if you ever experience uh, these sort of symptoms that you don't hesitate, go ahead and call up the eye clinic, make an appointment to be seen. Uh, you know, you only get two eyes, so please take care of them. 
Otherwise, our eye question of the day is, have you had an iritis? How did it go? Tell us about your experience. Go ahead and comment in the section below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and smash the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. And go ahead and share this video with any friends, family, uh, or anybody you think that might benefit from watching. Otherwise, if you'd like to catch up other cool videos from Dr. Eye Health, I'll hook you up with another cool one up over here, as well as another one down over here. Otherwise, again, this is Dr. Joseph Allen here from Dr. Eye Health, bringing you the best tips and education all about the eyes and vision. Keep an eye on it, and we'll talk to you soon.